Hey ladies, welcome to In Between Friends. I'm Rebecca and this is Erin and we are excited to be here today because we are no longer talking about pregnancy. Right, you're excited too. Yes. Yeah, I know. We'll probably still come back to it, um, yeah. looking back on Erin's pregnancy and kind of filling in holes where we thought maybe we left things out. But we are moving on. Um, particularly because the dudes have joined the world and we're um, super excited. Um, but today we're going to talk about the NICU because that's currently where they are and um, they are healthy. Yes. They are gaining strength. Mm -hmm. They are gaining independence, but um, they are still there. And since my kids were never in the NICU, um, they were just in the nursery because I was too lazy to have them in my room. <laughs> It's a shame you to know me now. No. <laughs> it was like, if you could take them. Um, <laughs> so I would love to know, like, the ins and the outs of the NICU. I know a lot of a lot of moms don't anticipate that, and then all of a sudden something does happen health-wise, and you're like, what? Wait, what? Yeah. What well, so, a scary connotation to it. Yeah. You hear it, and it's just like, oh my gosh. Well, you're like, um, it's intensive care. Yeah, completely. Like, that's frightening. Yeah. So will you just take the fear out of it for us? Yeah, completely, as much as I can. Um, it is your baby. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, know. It's just, I know. It's going to be a hard thing to have your, yourself separated from your babies. Once mm -hmm. you get in the doors, it is kind of like a, a padlock situation. Um, we specifically have to dial an outside phone and gain access to it. Okay. You'll notice I still have bands on my hand from the two dudes. Um, and we have to keep these on so that yeah. when there's a new nurse in there, because they there's a zillion nurses, by yeah. the way. Um, a zillion, and I'm consistently still day eight meeting new nurses <laughs> that I've never met, and they look at these things to make sure that I'm not some strange lady yeah. coming to talk to the, twin, yeah. the twins. Yeah, and that'll um, help in, uh, just to interject, that'll happen even with normal. Yeah. Every time they brought my baby to me, they had to check my bracelet and yeah. their bracelet constantly. And safety. Thankfully so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, there is a scrub in procedure, uh, specifically if you stay in the hospital during your duration while you're in the hospital. Um, it's a short little hand wash, kind of up to your elbows. If you leave the hospital, now that I'm out, I've been discharged and I come back, every single time I come in, I have a sponge with a scrubber on it and I scrub for three minutes. So you sit at a sink before you're allowed to see your kids, and you scrub, and you scrub, and you scrub, and I literally have, I don't think I'm going to have fingerprints when I'm yeah, doing this. Yeah, totally. Um, it's kind of an abrasive stuff, but that's, again, it's intensive care. There's yeah. uh, a lot of stuff going on in there that we don't want to bring in to it. Uh, there is an age limitation, at, specifically at my hospital. You know, even if you're a sibling, if you're under the age of 16, you're not allowed to yeah. make you. Um, parents are obviously allowed in, but beyond that, you're allowed one visitor with you to see it. So if my parents came... Um, and my husband was taking people in to see the boys. He could only take one person in at a time. And they had to go through the whole scrubbing procedure. Um, once you are in, you are allowed access to your babies. Uh, obviously not given access to other babies, but you're not even allowed to look in their isolates or incubators or whatever you want to call them. Interesting. And it's just a privacy issue. Yeah. I mean, there's some very sick babies in there who are touch and go. Yeah. And uh, it's... That's only your business. Okay. Depends on how, um, I don't want to say sick because that's just not a good connotation to me. My boys are not sick. Maybe like develop severe, like the, the severity of their de developmental yeah. challenges. Exactly. Um, that depends on how many, where, how they're rated, and then therefore if their nurse is primarily their nurse, oh, okay. or if their nurse has another patient on top sure. of your baby, or if it even has. Three patients. Okay. So, of course, you want your nurse to have two other babies because that means that your baby has very little to work on. Um, and that was pretty immediate with one of my twins, and it was day two for the other twin that it was down to just they were part of a group. Okay. Um, you do get some familiarity with the nurses. And can I just off the bat tell you how fabulous mm. most the nurses are? <laughs> I'm biting my lips because yeah, I get it. I had a problem today with the one. Um, most of them are fabulous, 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 fabulous. They love their jobs. Yeah. They love your baby. They don't take away from your ability to mother and be the mother yeah. and 
They want that attachment to happen. Yeah. They want them to get better quick. They, it's, it's a, usually a very, very easy, easy relationship and very supportive and quite honestly the best crash course I've ever been given in my entire life. I've taken expediated like university courses before and nothing beats being taught by these NICU nurses how to take care of babies. Yeah. Um, there is a 12 hour period which there's one nurse with your child or in my case, two nurses with yeah. each of my children. Um, the, they turn over in my hospital between 6.30 and 7.30 in the morning and 6.30 and 7.30 at okay. night. That is the only time I am not allowed to be Great. in NICU. And I specifically asked my doctor that. How often can I be here? He said, if you want to be here 22 hours of the 24 hour period, yeah. do it's it. Fine. He did not recommend it. He said, yeah. please take care of yourself. Yeah, you know, sure. And that is key to remember in this situation. Your babies are coming home. Yeah. And take care of yourself. Yeah, and and try not to be too wrapped up again. Most of the time, they're sleeping in there, and yeah. and that's not survivor's guilt. Like, don't think like, oh, I got discharged, and now I'm guilty. Now I feel yeah. You have to kind of suppress that. Yeah, and and just say no. I need I need a shower. Yes, very much. Maybe so. I need to do laundry. Maybe I need to take a nap. Yeah. That's that self care. That being said, though, yeah. they are so conducive to you wanting to be there, and they are really, really helpful in making you feel comfortable there. Doctors come in usually once a day, depending again on the severity of the situation with your child. Um, my boys get a checkup every single morning, and as well, the nurses do consistent checkups on them yeah. as well. Um, there's going to be so much noise. I for the first five days, anytime an alarm went off, I was just like, okay. Well, uh, uh, do you hear that? Like, and, and I would know who it was attached to, and one of my boys. And literally, once a buzzer's going off, and I'm like, "Somebody over here! Somebody yeah. over here!" Somebody. And she comes over, and she goes, "Okay, his feeding's done." It was like this most ridiculous thing. Like, why do you have to have an alarm going off to tell me that his feeding's done? Like, so don't let every single noise freak you out. It's not. It's maybe you just don't watch Grey's Anatomy during your pregnancy. Don't watch it generally. Watch it or can you break? <laughs> no, but you know when you watch any of those shows, a, a noise means not good, right? And in this situation, it's there's just a lot of babies. It's just a reminder. And there's not a whole lot, you know. Like I said, there's usually the nurses have more than one, so they just like noise to yeah. get them to go where they need to go. It doesn't mean anything most of the time, so don't try not to get wrapped up in that. Um, anything else I'm forgetting that you can think of? Oh, I think that's really good. Yeah. So just recognize that they're all on your side and everybody's super communicative with you. Be, be prepared to ask questions. Don't feel guilty to ask questions. Yeah. Make sure that yes. you, you understand everything that's going on. Um, get comfortable with it. It's going to be your home base. So make sure you understand what you can do and can't do. And, and, but don't, made, don't be made feel uncomfortable in that situation. That is your home base and you need to be able to, to kind of take ownership of yeah. it. And at the same time, I mean, this is for both types of births, just know that you're going to be dealing with a lot of nurses, like you said, mm -hmm. in general. And um, politeness goes a long way. Graciousness goes a long way to get people on your side. You do want those nurses on your side. They bring pain meds faster when they're on your side yeah. than if they're not. And, um, and then there are also people that you're just not going to gel with, like your nurse this morning was just not speaking your language. No. However, she had good information. She had excellent information. It just wasn't being delivered with care. There was no icing on her cake. No. It was just, here's the cake. It was like fruit cake. You know? <laughs> Without crappy. the fruit. Seriously. Yeah. Seriously. It was just a lump of bread. <laughs> So anyways, we hope that um, just kind of paints a, a different picture for you. Uh, maybe it's something that you can just kind of keep in the background so that you're not shocked if that does happen for you, to you, even to somebody that you know, so that you're kind of familiar with that and you can be a great support system for um, other women. Like our video, I know it's a tough subject, um, and I'm so grateful for you just to be sharing with transparency because I think it's just something that a lot of people do not talk about. Yeah. And um, it's just eye-opening for me as well. So, like our video, subscribe to YouTube channel, In Between Friends, and comment below if you have any questions. Maybe you've been in the NICU. Is there any advice you have for Erin? We'd love to hear from you um, and just create this community a little more. We so appreciate you. Um, check out our blog at www.inbetweenfriends for more, and we hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.